me that? Yeah. <laughs> All right, oh. let's see. How are we going to work this? Okay, so we are live on YouTube. And Twitch. And Twitch. Nice. Hopefully that doesn't fall over. <laughs> now I can't drink my espresso. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna get you something for you. I was gonna get you something else. I didn't even think of that. Let me give you something. That's all right. You I'll, sure? I'll, I'll 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 mix it up every once in a while. All right. Have you ever done something like this, Tasha? No, I haven't. I've done some different forms of media just through like emails and forums, but not a, a sit down. So this is pretty cool. Yeah, this is cool. This is my first time doing it too. He does it every week. He, he actually did one right before this. Very cool. Yeah. Now is it an everyday thing for your podcast? It's every day, bro. He does. Nice. He does. Um, it's called the weekly sit down, but he does it a lot more mm -hmm. than the weekly. <laughs> I started off doing. Him, I started off twice a week, and now it's like now I've eight this week. That's Very cool. Crazy. Yeah, we got three today. So okay, hello everyone, Twitch, YouTube, iTunes, everyone talk, Everybody listening. Everybody out there. Uh, today we have Sasha. What's your last name again? Cornet. Cornet on the air uh i met you through nick mm -hmm. maybe you, you give a little intro yeah you. i'm gonna do a little background so how i met sasha or not met but on on instagram was i started a vlog channel um i'd say about eight months ago and i was following unfollowing doing the whole thing trying to get followers but uh <laughs> when i followed you i noticed how many followers you had and it kept growing i, I think when i first started following you, you had maybe around twenty one thousand something like that. So I, I instantly DM'd you and I was like, hey, you know, I see I see your followers are growing all the time. Like, how are you doing this? And you pretty, were, pretty much were very simple with it, saying, you know, consistency and just uh, reaching out to each follower, talking to them and not ignoring followers. So um, mm. I obviously didn't unfollow you like I did <laughs> thousands, I made the of, cut. Yeah, like <laughs> thousands of other people. So it, it's been cool to watch you um, grow and, and do your thing while I was trying to do mine. So that's a little yeah. background on how I met you and um, how I got started. I was just really hanging out with my friends, making videos. So we're mm -hmm. obviously doing two completely different things. You're, you're more of a, like doing the bodybuilding competition or mm -hmm. what do you, what would you call it? Is it bodybuilding or is it more? So it is a division of bodybuilding. My coworkers call it Miss America bodybuilding. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> So it's one of the lower, the lower uh, physique tiers. So you're not like the big beefy mm -hmm. sized, yeah. but you definitely have some, some form. Yeah, definitely. I wish we can get a picture up of, I mean, we'll obviously <laughs> put your Instagram handle in there, but um, sure. yeah. So one thing that I was always wondering is how did you get into it? Like, did you just, mm -hmm. were you always into fitness or you just one day were like, cause my, one of my brother's best friends actually just started doing competitions and mm -hmm. he got into it because my brother was so into fitness and then he just really fed off of him, even though my brother's mm -hmm. never even done a competition. So he just, I guess people take it however they want to, but I always wondered how you got into it. Yeah. I think the industry is really contagious mm -hmm. and it's actually been really cool to see how much the bodybuilding world is blowing up because yeah, of crazy. social media. Mm -hmm. So I've always been really active, right? I played sports in high school and college. I was at my college gym four or five days a week. Wow. And I think just kind of being in that culture, meeting people, um, I got exposed to it and, you know, it's really addictive. <laughs> once, once you start living that lifestyle and you start getting the results and for me, it's like I was athletic for so many years and then I started dialing in my nutrition and suddenly I had abs mm -hmm. and I started dialing in my nutrition and suddenly I had freaking crazy shoulders and I was like, well, <laughs> what, what are these? Where yeah, do these it's come true. from? Abs are made in the kitchen. So I, I think it's very addictive um, and it's also, it's a very unique community and that's kind of where my social media comes into play is I'm able to interact and meet people worldwide like yeah. i have girlfriends in london that i talk to who are prepping <laughs> in a couple weeks and it's awesome yeah, it's cool crazy. because 
you get to know people on such a personal level. And I mean, that's really what social media is about. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sasha, I'm sorry, but where the picture, would you be able to get back the camera up a little or like, can you rest it on something or is it shaking? No, it's like, we're we're not getting your full face and yeah. Okay. Oh, it might be cutting off into like a square. Yeah. It's cutting you off the top of your head. (laughs) Okay. Give me, (laughs) give me a second. I know y'all want to see my forehead. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Hold on. Bear with me for one second. Yeah, go I've for got it. one of those pop sockets. I'm trying to lodge it into place. Yeah, maybe that'll. And now I'm just going to kind of lean back. Is that better? <laughs> yeah, that's good. Does that work? All right, I'm like legit. Now you're going to get some more abs. Yeah, if you could. Yeah, yeah, you could, yeah do it at <laughs> workout. <laughs> Look, I don't see. I don't, I don't have the sweet office like you have. Yeah, you got yeah, the yeah. whole. You got the studio. I, this studio is crazy, and this headphones no. and the microphone. I I feel like I'm listening to myself being recorded, and it's like <laughs> mind blowing. I feel like a badass when I put my beats on. Yeah. Those are on another <laughs> level. Yeah. No, these are these are crazy. I can't hear anything else. But you know, it's weird. Like I can crank a yeah. paper, and I can hear it perfectly. That's what you need to sell <laughs> to yeah. the gym. Yeah. So when you want to just go in and do your thing. That's it. Yeah, I, I used to actually rock beat solo to the gym as well, but I always had to put my, yeah. I feel like when I was working out, I'd always have to put my, my like hood over it because I would just start sweating. It would get crazy. Oh, you're one of those guys. You're intense. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I, I try not to. I, I don't carry around a gallon of water though, so I'm not at that. <laughs> you're not, you're not I'm quite not there. A, yeah, I'm not at that level yet. <laughs> All right, we're good. All right, finally. We got it. Nice. Yeah, we never had anyone Skype on their phone, so that's I think that's why it's going like this. <laughs> cool. All right, so I, I kind of blacked out. You, were, I was you weren't even on. listening. You I, know, we I, just went through so much stuff. I, was, I mean, we can end it right here. Like, I already I'm, know her. It's like... I'm not a technical <laughs> guy. Like, I like to do do the podcast. Now I got to do all this other crap. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's all set up. <laughs> right now, there's yeah. video involved. Now, before, it was just you speaking into this microphone. Now, yeah, now we gotta, it was so easy before. Now, <laughs> now look at me. Now we got espresso. We got, we now got I, live. Now I run off espresso and this freaking e-cigarette. Like, <laughs> that's it. I would have put on jeans on if I knew that I was going to be recorded like this. Oh, yeah, I, look at me, though. <laughs> yeah. I got a beanie Sasha, on. I mean, like, Sasha looks great. Yeah. Yeah, Sasha's fine. Y'all, I just came from the office, so I have that advantage. What do you do? Uh, oh, yeah, what do you, yeah, I thought you were... I besides work, this. it's really exciting. Brace yourself. I work in business software. Wow. It's as fun as it sounds. Hey, that's not bad. What, what, a, what company? It's a company called Benefit Mall. Um, do you, are you familiar with ADP at all? They do yes. payroll time, keeping yes. HR. Mm-hmm. I actually work with ADP. I work for Chase. So ADP oh, you're, is... you work for Chase. Okay, yes, yes that's your partnership. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So my company, Benefit Mall, it's like ADP, but we're on a national level. We don't branch on the global scale. Oh, okay. Cool. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So we work with bankers, How long CPAs, you been... brokers all day. <clears throat> How yeah. long you been there? I've been here a little over two years. All right. What were you doing before that? Similar role, different company. Okay, so yeah. is, so what, what's the goal? You want to make you want to be like a Instagram model, kind of. Man, no one cares about that. <laughs> My it's no, very lucrative I mean, though. I joke, it's I lucrative. Joke, I yeah. say that. Um, my goal on a per, on a personal level is to get my pro card for bodybuilding. I'm actually oh, competing awesome. nationally this year. My goal on a social media level is to just impact people. Mm-hmm. I know that sounds. No, that sounds it's... strange. A um, little background on me. Before I ever got into all of this, you asked me, you know, how did this start? It was actually because of Instagram. And I always joke and I tell people before I ever started lifting, before I ever got into this, I wanted to make a change and I wanted to take advantage and I wanted to take control of my life. I didn't know how. Mm-hmm. And it was this freaking girl on Instagram. I swear <laughs> on everything. You still follow like, her? I, yeah, she changed she changed everything for me. And if I can impact one person, if I can help one person, like that's it. At the end of the day, I mean wow. that's it. An Instagram model changed your life. Uh, Instagram <laughs> models. Is she, um, is she is she into uh, fitness as well or she's just like she hot? Was. Yeah, she's a bodybuilder. Oh, okay. And she's a she's pro a bodybuilder? Beast. She's she's on another level than me. <laughs> there you go. Is she a, uh, a pro bodybuilder or is she um, just She doing hasn't it for gone fun? pro. No. She's, she competes nationally. Yeah, you can back it up. Yeah. It's hard to go pro, man. I know. Everybody it is. wants to. Really? Mm hmm. Now, uh, do you 
do one that's all natural or do you take a good amount of supplements? Like how, how do you incorporate yeah, that? What's into your your, yeah. yeah. What's your regimen? Yeah. Yeah. What's my regimen? So again, within bodybuilding, there's a ton of tiers. Mm -hmm. The tier I do is called the bikini division. It's the lowest division. And the primary focus is to have that more um, feminine look. So you have full legs, you have a lean core, mm -hmm. but you don't have to be muscular. So you don't have to be, you know, taking a ton of shit. I do take supplements. Mm -hmm. um, I'm happy to share those with you after this call. There's too many to count. No. <laughs> but yeah, no, I certainly, um, you know, I take a Yohimbi is an easy one that you can add into like a cardio regime. Mm -hmm. It's like seven bucks from a vitamin shop, all natural. Um, I take a fat burner when I'm leaning out. I take um, a couple of products by Blackstone and Centurion Labs to kind of help put on muscle. They're plant-based products. Hey, um, he's all into plant-based. <laughs> you, you are? Okay. Genius. Yeah, so there's a, I mean, there's a ton out on the market, but the, for the division I do, it's not as much as much muscle. Are there any restrictions on what you can take? No. no. So I compete in what's called uh, the NPC, the National Physique Committee. So there are plenty of competitors who do run steroids and really? they run. And is know, it hard to compete against them? Sorry? Is it hard to compete against them? I don't think very many girls in my bikini division do, do it. it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. It's more of like the true bodybuilders. Mm -hmm. Like they're, you know, the, Going for the, the ones with the huge size. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah crazy biceps and everything mm -hmm. and don't get me wrong they're still working their asses off. oh no of they're course i mean it's not easy it every single day exactly it's just a different level mm -hmm. i mean a lot of people think you, you take a steroid you don't have to work out and you get huge i i right. completely right understand that's kind of like that's the not... misconception and exactly. in reality the people i know who do choose to kind of take that stuff they work with the, the hardest yeah they're they're the hardest workers you'll ever meet yeah, yeah. it's mm -hmm. just kind of that extra level exactly it puts you past the plateaus that other people can't get past Mm -hmm. uh, what in steroids in the, in the bikini division you can go pro and you can be successful all natural absolutely mm -hmm. wouldn't steroids not really be good because you said it's not really you're supposed to be muscular right i mean i guess it just <laughs> depends on your goals it just depends yeah. on your goals okay so you're because i mean i don't know anything about steroids at all i mean are they actually bad for you or like, I don't really know. There, There's a lot of misconceptions. Um, kind of the way that I understand it is it's all kind of how you do it. So I do have friends, uh, males, that, that choose to take stuff. Um, and it's really easy to do it the wrong way because you're manipulating your hormones is essentially what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot that goes into it from a scientific standpoint. So if you just kind of don't know what you're doing, you can hurt yourself. Yeah. But you stay away, I guess, right? There's not really a need, yeah. Again, in my in my division, to kind of delve into that. Mm -hmm. Is now, it about I mean, you? Can, yeah. You can look. You I mean you can look at my Instagram, right? I'm not no, packing. No, like, I'm a good size for an average female. No, definitely. Yeah. But, and you just posted something um, about the 2017 cut and then the 2018 one, where you're five mm -hmm. or eight weeks out on one of them, um, and now and eight on another. Yeah. And now you're eight weeks out from your show now, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, how does that daily regimen change from being six months out to compared yeah. to a couple of weeks? Because I know you're obviously doing the last things you could do to get into the shape you yeah. want to. So I'm sure it's a lot more strict than it would be when, you know, you don't have a competition for a couple of months. Right, right, right. So what's funny is that a lot of people kind of think that as competitors, we just like cut a shit ton out. Like mm -hmm. I'll get people a couple weeks out that are like, you need to go eat a cheeseburger. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's fine. But what they don't understand again, it's all science. And I legitimately eat more year round than probably most dudes. You know, I eat a shit ton. I'm eating every two and a half hours. Wow. It's just nutrient that dense food. Awesome. <laughs> and when we, when we cut, it's all the science of just kind of slowly tweaking it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, my diet, you know, six months out versus a month out is going to be very different. But the way I do it is to just slowly, slowly reduce calories every couple of weeks when I plateau. So the goal is to actually keep calories as high as possible in the whole process. And I only reduce them when I plateau. Really? Gotcha. Okay. Have you always your whole life been? Oh, you got something to say? Oh, yeah. Well, no. Well, I'm 
I'm a visor. You can't see me here. Get on. <laughs> we have more friends. We got one yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. I've been listening on the side. But um, <clears throat> no, it's because uh, one of my best friends, I'm Andrew, by the way. So nice to meet you. Hey, Andrew. Nice to meet you. Um, But yeah, no, uh, just because you're, you're speaking about the whole science behind things. My best friend, he's um, like a, a – he did win his pro card. I'm trying to look nice. at his Instagram right now. He's a, a WMBF, professional bodybuilder. He, we, he did it a couple of years ago. Um, I was like, you know, with him the whole time he was going to all these competitions. Mm-hmm. He kind of like out here on Long Island um, – and then through New York, he kind of made low-key low waves because everybody was surprised. He literally was new to the scene doing everything like mm-hmm. that. And um, But just watching his diet and listening to the whole science of what you're talking about, I watched him do it. And the nights before competition, he would Dude. his we would go out to eat and mm-hmm. like for this last thing. But he would get a, a plain patty burger – with mm-hmm. and eat one bun or one half of the mm-hmm. bun and like that was it with like no cheese on it that was like his last meal before the morning and then in the morning he'd carb up crazy he'd have like mm-hmm. bananas with um uh reese's spread that was like his, <laughs> yeah. and, and then while i'm sitting there while he's like prepping you know doing his little bicep curls before he's getting on stage or whatever i'm uh eating his you know Reese's the, peanut butter the, the, the leftover Reese's. Yeah, I'm, I'm, eating, I'm eating all that stuff. So I got to, you know, live, you know, that was You're, you're eating the scraps. Yeah. Do y'all want to know, do y'all want to know what I eat all day on my show day? Yeah, definitely. Oh, so the Pop-Tarts, everything. I know what it's, I know what it's like. <laughs> my boy's eating Oreos so, and all crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah, so I got the hashtag trending coffee and Pop-Tarts every fucking 20 <laughs> yep, minutes. Yep. Every 20 minutes on show days, I'm throwing back one Pop-Tart and drinking like, an ounce or two of coffee. So I'm what? eating like that daily. I should be show ready. I should be yeah, show you're ready. You're ready to go. Too. I should be show ready. Right. <laughs> yeah, you are. You're just peaking a little too early. Right. Oh, yeah, okay. exactly. <laughs> I, I started my calorie overload way too early. <laughs> That's it's a good all, spin. It's all the science, though. And I mean, I can get really nerdy into it, but it is cool. Like, like uh, you were just saying, was it Andrew? Yes. Yeah, like you were just saying, Andrew, like the day before and the day of, it's all the science of getting those carbs filling up your muscles when you're that lean the second you give your body sodium oh, yeah, the second you give your body crazy. C- carbs so you're filling your glycogen stores and then a little bit of protein a little bit of fats as long as you're you don't have a ton of water your muscles are going to completely fill out and mm-hmm. it just everything pops yeah it's no, just it all science crazy. it was crazy watching my friend i mean you know i mean yeah. he's my best friend since a kid he always kind of had that I got to jab him a little bit. He kind of always had that that layout when we were kids. I was like, oh, this kid's, <laughs> by the time we're 15, he's going to have a six-pack, all that stuff. But, you know, no, but he works he's hard, crazy. Freak genetics. He does, he does. It skipped yeah. over his older brother. He was pissed, so he's pissed about that. But So he got the good genes. <laughs> but, no, he. Uh, I definitely just crazy watching him fill yeah. out and all that stuff the day of the show. And, yeah, it's crazy. Is there a huge oh, yeah. difference from the, the day before to the day? Like, do mm-hmm. you, you notice like a crazy difference? Like, wow, I'm, I look that much better from the, the day Within before. Within hours. And, really? Within and then you, hours. Then you throw that Last. tan on, forget yeah. about mm-hmm. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. You'll notice, I mean, you will notice it last year. Um, I mean, I, when I competed last year, I hadn't had a cheat meal in 10 weeks or so. Wow. So nothing off my normal nutrient dense diet for 10 weeks. Mm-hmm. And then the night before I had chicken Alfredo, took Ooh. pictures before and after Went back for seconds on chicken Alfredo, <laughs> went and snoozed, woke up, and I just, again, I ate Pop-Tarts every, like, 20 minutes, and wow. I could just watch my abs. Just, it was insane. I think I did a video on my story back then. Um, so every Pop-Tarts hour, make your my body was just pop. transforming. No, honestly, I was, we used to, me and my friend used to be like, Mike, what the hell are you, that's my friend, Mike, uh, <laughs> you should you check him out. as M.Ragonell on Instagram. You should check him out. He's a, yeah, he's yeah. a low-key guy. He's actually, since he stepped away from that, he's like in school for uh, physical therapy and stuff like that. So cool. he's kind of continuing his journey of helping people through that way and doing things. But, um, but he... Uh, was eating his post workout was one pop tart with something. Yeah. That was like after his trip, yeah, all the time. And like after I would go to the gym with him too. I mean, I would eat the <laughs> other pop tart. <laughs> I ate the other pop tart that he didn't get to eat, and so it was great. That's great. Man, I've got I've got a pop tart drawer at the office. Wow. <laughs> What's your favorite pop tart? <laughs> Strawberry. Red, yo, my my friend put me on my favorite because of my friend Red Velvet. Red wow. Velvet pop tarts. What? Okay, yeah. I've never tried. That oh, one. you gotta find it. You okay. got one. I'm a s'mores guy. I like the s'mores pop tarts. Can't beat that. No. 
What's your favorite Dude, one, Sasha? I was all about the confetti cupcake. Oh, yo, yes. You had that one, too. <laughs> I had that one, too. You've had yeah. them all, yo. What pop tart haven't you had? I have. I have had most of them. But low-key, I'm actually, I do like the original, just like blueberry. Like, yeah, yeah. The, uh, that was always blue, my favorite you, as a I'm kid. A classic, I'm blueberry. a classic guy. I'm yeah. a classic yeah. guy. That's funny. That's now, crazy. getting I'm back big, to like. I'm a big Wildberry fan. Wildberry's like good. The, yeah, with that's. The purple and the zigzag. Exactly, yes. That's a quintessential one. Everybody thinks of a pop tart. If you're going to draw one, that's the one you draw. The quintessential <laughs> pop tart. <laughs> it's, I gotta draw a big word in there every once in a while. I want people to think I'm an idiot. No one's yeah. ever placed those words together. <laughs> a quintessential, quintessential pop, pop tart. tart. Yeah. <laughs> now, getting back to like the healthy eating, like my girlfriend oh, and I, man. we actually try to eat healthy every Monday. Um, yep. But I mean, the we're, the week, every <laughs> Monday. Every Monday, we're like, you know what? This is the day we're gonna start eating healthy. Once a week, <laughs> we eat healthy. We, we, we may, we prep. We'll we'll do like chicken and brown rice and vegetables, wow. and then maybe ground turkey, rice and vegetables. But like, we sh- always stick with something like that. Like, do you have any meals that are that nobody would really think are healthy, but they are healthy? Because I'm always when I think of healthy, I think of grilled chicken. Like that's mm-hmm. the only thing that I, I feel and brock. Like just vegetables, mm-hmm. grilled chicken, and brown rice. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like when I'm trying to eat healthy, it's so hard because I get so sick of it so quickly. So you think of you think of bro diets. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When you think healthy. That's what I'm saying. And I don't like fish yeah. either, because a lot of people say, Oh, eat salmon. I'm like, I can't eat salmon. <laughs> I said it four times. <laughs> no, man, I I will not eat anything that I don't like because I don't think I it's gonna digest well. Like, mm-hmm. why are you gonna sit there and force feed stuff you hate? That mm-hmm. doesn't even make sense. Uh, what's really, really cool about the fitness industry is kind of the direction that it's going. And what's actually become extremely popular is this approach called flexible dieting, or some people call it if it fits your macros, which basically is just this concept of so long as you're within your caloric range and so long as you're getting in enough proteins, carbs, and fats, throw in some fun stuff once in a while. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually have a highlight a story highlights on my Instagram called, I think it's called if it fits your macros, um, but with just some fun options. So halo top ice cream. Oh, that's my freaking go to. Have you all ever had that? No, but I just got fish food last night. (laughs) Ben and Jerry's Halo. I'm a, I'm a Ben and Jerry's girl. Like yeah. no, it is yeah. my yeah. downfall. Chunky monkey, anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ben and Jerry's, but Halo Top is a really good alternative. You can sit down and eat the entire pint for a quarter of the calories in Ben and Jerry's, wow. and it legit tastes good. It actually tastes like ice cream, which is shocking. <laughs> they got a vegan one now too, Halo Top. They no, like oh, they came out with dairy free too, didn't yep. they? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. That's right. Yes, ma'am. That's right. Yep. <laughs> wow. So I would, I would recommend that if you want to try to get me a little more healthy. If you do the Halo Top, set it on the counter for like five minutes. Um, it will take a little bit longer to kind of soften up, mm. but then it's it's solid. It really is. That's where you go. Also, like, man, I eat. I eat these pizza bagels. They're on my story too. Wait, are amazing. bagel bites? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this guy knows every every snack. <laughs> That's what I eat late <laughs> night at like midnight. I eat like like a whole box or two, three boxes. So you have a competition bites. every next morning. Yeah. <laughs> In my head, I, I tell myself. <laughs> That's great. There you go. And now, now cheat meals. Let's talk about cheat meals because I cheat meal pretty much every meal. Now. Yeah. What is your favorite cheat meal? And does actually does does eating healthy ever get easier? Like, do you do you get into a routine where it's like, you know what, I'm I'm not even interested in eating a Five Guys burger. I don't know if they have Five Guys where you're from, but I like that is that is a weekly thing for me. I will never not want a burger. Okay, okay. but the cravings definitely get easier. The mm-hmm. discipline definitely gets easier. Man, I've been meal prepping and tracking my macros since 2014. A while, a while. So you've written down every meal for the last four years? I have done flexible dieting approaches where I legit have to, like, track everything. And then I've done bro meal plans where I just eat the same thing every day for weeks. Yeah, see, that's that's me. Like, when I try to eat yeah. healthy, I'll make, like, 20 pieces of chicken, so a, a pound <laughs> of rice, and that's what I'm eating that whole week. And then I'll get sick of it, and I won't want to eat healthy anymore. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And, so, and so that's the problem. And if that's what you're facing... I would recommend doing more of a flexible dieting approach, but then you're right. It's going to take a little extra work to kind of plan it out, write it out. Mm-hmm. So I do the bro diet usually because I'm lazy and I don't feel That's like what I'm saying. It's easier. my shit. 
Yeah. It's easier for me, mm -hmm. but I know how to kind of fit something in. So if my friends want to go to Qdoba, if I want to go to like a Noof's eatery, I will. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm just having a cheat meal, I say, screw it. I'm just going to do it. Um, Chicago deep dish pizza. Oh, absolutely. We're, 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 <laughs> we'll say New York is better, but we won't get into that. Cause... The, the quintessential <laughs> pizza. <laughs> I, okay. In all fairness, I've never had New York style pizza from oh. New York. So... All right, you can't knock it then. Yeah. Yeah, I, can't, yeah. I can't. I mean, I've never had hey. Chicago pizza, so I can't knock that either. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like it's like this thick. Oh man, yeah, so deep dish. it's crazy. That's the stuff. Have you always, your whole life, been into working out, bodybuilding, and stuff like that, or is this like recent, like last few years? So You've just been I've athletic. always been active. I've always pl I played sports mm -hmm. all growing up, all through high school, and then I started lifting weights in college. Okay. What sports were you playing? Soccer? How'd you know? I, I, f <laughs> I feel like that's the most really fit girls played soccer. Yeah. As, as a, when they okay, were and it. soccer is easy to stay yeah. fit because you're running around constantly. How about yeah, like lacrosse, the, yeah. lacrosse. Legs too. of steel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was a forward, so they just kept me going up Run, and down. Yeah, that's too much. I actually stopped playing lacrosse <laughs> because of the running. I'm, I'm an ice hockey player. I just glide everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, nice. so I, used cool. to, I just, I literally, I quit lacrosse because of the running. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you know what? Hockey really seems like more my speed. I could glide when I'm tired and sit on the bench when I'm not. Yeah, exactly. It's too funny. All right, awesome. So where 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 is the goal? The goal is I think you said it. You want to be The pro goal card. is to go pro. Go pro. And then mm -hmm. from there, number 1 in the world. So I'm a one goal at a time kind of girl. Okay. Got you. Now, With this uh, lifestyle, it's really easy to become obsessed and completely honest psychotic. I know a lot of competitors <laughs> yeah. who take this to an unhealthy extreme mentally. Um, it would be very easy for me to become one of those because I am very goal driven and type A. So for me, that's kind of my anchor is I'm focusing on one goal. Once I get that, we'll move on gotcha. to the next. Ha going back to social media and and the bodybuilding process, has, have you generated any revenue from social media and the bodybuilding? Or are you just right now? It's just solely for fun. Couple, so I've got a couple motivators for why I do my social media. I was extremely, extremely blessed. About a week ago, I found out that I earned a sponsorship through an absolutely incredible organization, Sean's Couture Cuties. They do your stage bikini. They do hair and makeup services. They also do posing choreographing. So it's not revenue per se, but it's huge savings. Um, Okay. So, like yeah. so yeah. and things like that. I, I don't. Up. I don't want to get on social media to be this like obnoxious marketing person. Mm -hmm. I don't. Like I don't want to be that person who just spams your page with nonsense all days. I want it to actually be relevant and real. Yeah. Yeah. Use my code to get discounts on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like over <laughs> well, and over. Well, you know what's crazy? They like my brother. Like going back to my brother, he's heavy into working out. And one of our <clears throat> friends that we grew up with actually started a company. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, Destin Nutrition. And mm -hmm. he was doing it for a little bit, um, but he wasn't able to focus on it as heavy as he wished. But he, they get like 10 to 20% of every sale. So if you make a, mm -hmm. like you got, what, 27, 28,000 followers. If you get a good amount of people to buy stuff, that's a lot of money. Oh, yeah, definitely. You just, you got to ride the line. Like, are you always sure. posting to sell stuff? Is or, it too much? Got, exactly. Yeah, when exactly. is it too much between selling and, and keeping people interested? Yeah. I think the other facet is that a lot of people who are on social media and kind of do what I do, they're personal trainers or they're actually in the fitness industry. And just being completely transparent here, it is really hard to thrive in those fields. Mm -hmm. I do know people who are personal trainers and they are bringing in six figures because they're exceptional, but th I, that is the exception, not the rule. Yeah, I can definitely testify that with like Get that my close friend to you. Mike. Oh, with my friend Mike, who I was telling you about before, he, you know, giving me all those Pop Tarts, but no, he, mm -hmm. and now he's back in school for mm -hmm. physical therapy. I mean, he was doing PT, he'll still do it on the side, mm -hmm. but it's just, you know, even him thinking career wise, what can, mm -hmm. you know, also make him a living. So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, everybody's path is different, of course. But, yeah, like mm -hmm. he, he knows for himself, you know, it's hard to – especially he's a very introverted person. So to be a personal mm -hmm. trainer and, like you say, those ones who, who, you know, excel, they're very, you know, they have an outspoken personality and, you know, they're willing mm -hmm. to, 
you know, maybe even put themselves out there more through a social media to get mm-hmm. those clientele that they need. But you're very right with that. Personal training is it's all, it's mm-hmm. a rough game, mm-hmm. especially in the beginning where you're not, you're not making that much money and you got to keep going or else. Yeah, yeah I mean the, the gym gets a big cut and it it's tough. So like I said, I have a day job. A lot of actually, a lot of competitors do have have day jobs. My day job, I love it, and that's what provides my life. That's what provides the ability for me to compete. It's what pays the bills. My fitness journey is my passion. So for me, I don't, those two aren't the same. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is, is a, a factor in my social media because I, I'm, I don't, I don't need to market shit because I don't need someone to pay me because I have a job. Exactly. And I don't, I don't mean to sound, sound like anything saying that, but Mm -hmm. to me, it's more important to make zero dollars on Instagram than to forfeit who I am and be some obnoxious person who just spams all day. Mm Mm-hmm. Could but that. could you could you be in the middle though? Could you could you still feel how you feel like feel good about it and still post some stuff and make some money? If it was for a brand that I one hundred percent believed in, yeah, I, I absolutely. That. But it would have to be the right opportunity. Yeah. I have had a couple nutrition brands reach out to me, but again, I don't believe in just marketing for the sake of marketing for you. I don't need pennies on the dollar. F- I. Mm-hmm. If it's a brand that I 100% support, 100%, there's about three or four supplement companies that I use daily that I would absolutely work with if the opportunity arose. Like, um, what is your favorite supplement right company? Chance. Yeah, I got you. What's your favorite supplement company? God, that's tough, man. Um, Blackstone Labs is up there. Blackstone is one of them. Nutrex Research is Nutrex. up there. I'm a big fan of Centurion Labs. Um, I would say those are... Because supplements aren't cheap either. Those are probably so if you, if even working for someone that you could get a discount. I mean, mm-hmm. you, you, my brother, he was spending $130 in a month on supplements. I mean, they, they man, get Man, you don't want to check my bank account. Oh, man. Like, <laughs> on, on an average month, like how much would Rose you spend? and supplements. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. that's crazy. It's all an investment, though. Yeah. You're Into investing your body, in your body. Exactly. Right. And that's the thing. Like, I'm, I'm boring as hell. I don't go out on weekends. I'm mm-hmm. not partying. So... I just spend money different than a lot of people is kind of what it comes down to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same here. We don't – I don't go out yeah. on weekends those, anymore. Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> those days you're just, are You're over. just blowing it on espresso. Right. <laughs> yeah. All my money exactly. goes to espresso. So are you, are, you one of the, are you one of the proud people like my friend who's, who's basically on bodybuilding.com and, and, has, and has every single free, free gift that you get with all of your purchases? <laughs> you know how you get to pick those – well, the free wrist straps, the free shaker. Like, um, do you have all those things? Have you ordered bodybuilding.com so, so much to I'm that point? I'm actually a very, loyal compa- a very loyal customer of a company called Natural Body Inc. Okay. So they're a supplement company. That's who I buy all my supplements through. Um, and they're Natural pretty cool Inc. because every time you have a $100 purchase, it's free shipping and you get a free T-shirt. Oh, cool. So all my freaking gym T-shirts <laughs> are basically from them. That's great. That's awesome. Did Another you... social media question. I'm yeah. sorry, Joe. No, mm-hmm. go for it. Um, posting progress pics. Now I know that you're mm-hmm. married, and does mm-hmm. that ever is that? I mean, I've seen your husband on on your page. He's a, he's a monster <laughs> too. So I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure that you both work out together or have in the past. Uh huh. Um, Posting those progress pictures, I mean, I'm sure you get some dirty comments. How do you look past, like, the negativity and... How do you deal with the trolls? Exactly. How do you say, like, oh, look, look at that ass. The like, how do, you, how do you get, like, yeah. get past that? Because yeah, I'm, yeah. sure, I'm sure you have some of that. Man. Do you read your comments? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you're catching flack on Instagram. That's true. Whether it's a dirty look from some girl at Walmart. Mm-hmm. There's, there's BS everywhere you look. Mm-hmm. So I think just kind of having a mindset that you don't care Mm -hmm. and you're just going to brush it off. I think that anyone can relate to that. They get more mad when you do that too. When when you don't care about what they're saying. And and there's an awesome feature where you can block people. Wow. That's true. That is true. So you've pulled a few blocks. Mm -hmm. You've you've blocked. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, every bodybuilding person, because you obviously want to put up the progress uh, picks to keep yourself motivated and keep yourself like, Hey, you know, accountable. Exactly. Accountable. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And I'm sure you get the 13-year-olds that are on there like, oh, my God, look at her butt. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the most action they get all day is on Instagram. So I'm sure the, you hear that. The bodybuilding culture is extremely different than the real world. Of course. And so 
there are absolutely more times mature. That I'm like, should I post this? <laughs> I have no problem posting this. Mm -hmm. I respect my husband enough to ask him, are you comfortable with me posting this? Mm -hmm. I know that my bodybuilder friends have no problems with it, but you're right. You open yourself up to the world at large. And again, the bodybuilding world is a very different mindset. So you're right. I'm posting progress pictures that are, that would make very many people squirm. <laughs> and very many people may not even know what they look like in those positions. Mm -hmm. But it just is what it is. And I, like you said, like you said, I post it for myself to track my progress and to track my changes because it has I'm a date selfish. on it. And you can I care about me. I care about where I'm going and what I'm doing. And if you want to be part of my world, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you ever gotten? We did a segment the other day. Girls, mm -hmm. re girls reading guys DMs. Have you gotten some crazy DMs? Man, <laughs> can I? How how, how PG thirteen does your podcast get? It does. There's it's no not such at all. Thing. It's, There's no such yeah. thing. There's, it's not rated. No, nah, it's for <laughs> mature broad audiences. Okay, so <laughs> most, I'm excited. <laughs> I so it's it's actually something that I was thinking about the other day is how interesting it is that people think that when they go onto other people's social media pages or their websites or they see their photos, it's like, we're not real people. <laughs> it's like, they just say what they want and do what they want and think what they want. Like there's no repercussion. people have sent me dick pics Oh, on, on Instagram, on Instagram DMs. Oh my God. <laughs> They really don't care about their account. That's they're, ballsy. You know what it is? They'll, yeah, they probably so, think, like, I'll I mean, never see this girl. Like, if it works, it works. No, and if yeah, not, yeah. I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, I've DM girls that haven't gotten the responses, but I'm not going that far. <laughs> Maybe they're just throwing it out to everybody and seeing if somebody will bite. But yeah. <laughs> I've gotten some weird stuff for sure. It's literally ballsy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that's that's ruthless. Yeah. I, like, Snapchat, it disappears, at least. Like, now... Now, that's a yeah, forever she, picture. She, if she was a, a mean person, she'd just post that shit. Like, look at this dick pic this guy just did. Right? Like, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not I'm not that cruel. Um I delete a lot of messages. Uh, most messages I don't open if I think they're gonna be questionable. Mm -hmm. How do you tell though if they're gonna be questionable? Well, if you get a DM <laughs> from somebody that you're not friends with, it goes into yeah. a separate um oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you want it to goes into this? a section called like requests. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So there has been a time or two where I thought I swiped delete and I opened and it was a very <laughs> unpleasant surprise. But... <laughs> now going back to your husband, is does he get into like um, Instagram? I, I I don't know. I, I've seen you post a He's couple. He's not about on him. the dick pic level yet. No, no, <laughs> no not into your DMs. Yeah. <laughs> Who the fuck sent you this? <laughs> <laughs> Who did this? Where's Rachel? <laughs> Where's Rachel? <laughs> no, he. He doesn't really care about it. No. I mean, he'll I mean, he's a big dude, so I'm sure he'll be able to take I think he posted a picture of me, like, on New Year's. Yeah. And then before that, maybe he posted something, like, a year ago. Mm -hmm. Is it, he it, into bodybuilding, or does he just stay fit? He is. I think he's actually going to do his first competition next year, so oh. I'm excited for him. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you're going to be training him now. Man, he <laughs> trains. Yeah. He, no, he definitely yeah. does. So we're we're super cheesy. We actually met at the gym. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Bodybuilder love story. Bodybuilder <laughs> like swole mates. It's like general hospital. <laughs> <laughs> swole mates, that's good. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Okay. Oh, there you go. Wow. Yeah, I see you that. guys. You guys met at the lap pull down, or what? <laughs> yeah. Did he come up Man, to you? Did you go up to him? First lift. Wow. <laughs> all these pun. All these puns <laughs> now. Yeah. Talk about cheesy. Now we're getting cheesy. <laughs> Don't make the cheeseburgers, man. Awesome. That is awesome. So okay. What else you got on that paper? I know you got, you're yeah, looking at I, notes. You know what? I've had so many questions because like I said, I've, I started following you like eight months ago when I first uh, started my vlogging channel and mm -hmm. to see how you were growing. It was, it was cool because I wanted to do the same thing. So I, mm -hmm. I and you looked like a, a genuine person rather than the people that, you know, you DM them, they don't even answer. I mean, the first time I DM'd mm -hmm. you, it was like an hour later, I got an answer. So I, I have had a lot of questions. I probably spent that hour weighing whether or not, like, I, <laughs> I was worth it. Like, is this guy going to send me dirty pics no. or is he cool? Yeah. <laughs> see, see, now, like, I have a girlfriend, and she would kill me if I ever did anything like that. Somehow, she would, she's a lawyer, so I, without even looking, she would find uh -oh. out somehow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, let's see what else I got. Um, <laughs> what, what keeps you motivated? Do you, is it just because you, you love it, or is it is it something else? Yeah, so that's actually 
probably the million dollar question in the fitness world is how do you stay motivated? How do I get motivated? What's your why? Motiv- yeah. Motivation's bullshit. Mm-hmm. Everybody, it's impossible to be motivated 100% of the time. I think the people that learn to live this lifestyle, they learn to rely on discipline versus motivation. Mm -hmm. So yesterday was like the worst day I've had on prep. I was exhausted. I felt like garbage. I did not want to work out. And I went into my workout and I said, okay, I'm only going to think for the next 60 seconds. So I would do my 12 uh, reps. I would rest for 60 seconds repeat. And I did that over and over and over. And then before I knew it, I finished my workout. It was like an hour and 15 minutes later. I wasn't motivated, but I know how to rely on discipline. Mm -hmm. And I know that in the long run, this makes me happy. So on the days that I don't feel like it, I just keep pushing. Yeah. Cause like what now, when do you go to the gym before or after work? So I'm on two a days right now. Oh, jeez. So it's before so right I start <laughs> my day at about 5.30 a.m. with cardio, and then I do my workouts um, at night after work. And you're just fully – you're, like, fully acclimated. Like, that's no big deal to do two a days, right? I mean, like I said, I've been doing this for a while. Yeah. But I only I only do two a days before a competition. I don't really do cardio unless I'm on prep. Mm-hmm. Prep means that I'm prepping for a for contest. Sure. Okay. I'd imagine the most important part is your routine, right? If you get out of the routine, that's what kind of what throws you off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's like a, it's momentum, right? When you're consistent and you keep seeing results and you keep moving along, you can kind of stay motivated because you're still seeing results. But like you said, once you get off the wagon and you kind of lose that consistency, it, it gets harder. Have you fallen off the wagon and been like, I'm not going to go work out today? Or it's just not. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought it was to be like not even an option. Like, no, I'm a freaking human. (laughs) um, My my first contest I prepped from, I openly tell people I walked away four weeks out. Um, It's hard. It is hard to go through competition prep. And I was not mentally strong enough the first time I did it. Yeah. What was the reason? Did you just what would you think? Um, There was a lot of reasons. I had a lot of doubt. I think uh, I remember that. Was that was that recently? Was that like within the last year? That would have been 2016. Okay, but I've no, talked about it maybe. within probably the last year. I, I try to occasionally, you know, talk about more than just pizza but yeah. <laughs> and those bagels. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the main reasons when you're getting ready for a show – you have nothing to compare it to because your first time getting that lean. And so you have these doubts of, am I going to be ready? Am I going to be lean enough? Am I going to win? Am I going to make myself look stupid? I'm getting on a stage against all these other girls that are bringing it. I don't feel like I am. So there's a lot of self doubt and there's a lot of fears and I wasn't in a good place mentally. Yeah. You just got to put that stuff aside, right? Yep. And that's what I tell girls that I talk to who maybe it is their first time prepping is just keep going for it. Believe in yourself. I know that sounds really cheesy, but just keep pushing because you'll be shocked once you finally get to the show day to see how far you've come and it'll all be worth it. Did you have someone that was like you were you were like a pupil for them and they trained you and like this is what you got to do? And absolutely. I've used my coach for three and a half years. Oh, wow. (laughs) How'd you find your coach? My husband. Oh, He's it's your not, coach? My oh. husband isn't my coach. Oh, okay. My husband knew him. <laughs> okay, gotcha. No, uh, we'd probably kill each other if he coached me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all day together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you have any people that you're coaching now and pass, paying it forward? I, I don't personally because it's not my expertise. Okay. I'm sure people ask you to help them out and stuff though, right? I, I have. And I've got a, you know, I have a foundation when it comes to understanding nutrition, understanding workouts but I don't have a certification in it. And I think that it's more valuable for me to refer them to people who are experts than me give them some BS half-assed. That's one of my issues with these Instagram fitness models. Everyone has a plan to sell. Everyone has some BS that they want to sell. And I don't think that everybody is qualified and I'm certainly not qualified. So I'm not going to pretend to be. Yeah. Some of these people on Instagram are like their, their profession is influencer. (laughs) Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. what is that? <laughs> every, every, Dude. isn't everyone on Instagram going to influence an influence influencer? Some way or another. Yeah. Right. Everybody, 
everyone, not everyone, some people think that they're up here and they're down here. Yeah. I am down here. I am way the frick down here. I know where I am. But that's why I'm working every day to try to get better. And I think that that's, again, where your mindset kind of comes. To get up here, where what do you have to do? I think it's a constant like self evolution, mm-hmm. constantly working on yourself. Do you do you have um, like I know you you're definitely in tune with your physical side. Do you have a spiritual? Do you do you meditate anything like that? Or are you religious? I am very religious. I actually posted about that yesterday. Um, everything that I have, whether it's my job, my fitness goals, anything that I've achieved. It is 100% from God, and I think that in a way that makes me feel a lot more empowered when I am kind of shooting for things that are scary, like competing on a national level stage against thousands of competitors, is knowing like at the end of the day, I do believe that God's plan is there, and I don't know what it is, but I have faith in that, and I have faith that if I go on stage this year and I do terrible that's okay because I did my portion and it wasn't part of his plan. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a lot of peace that can come when you have that mindset. It's all about the mindset, your paradigm. It's um, like you could look at something as being, Oh, I failed or you're learning Mm -hmm. from it and you, right. Exactly. No, I truly, I truly believe that you either win or you learn. And that's kind of how I try to look at it. That's a good, I like that win or learn. Mm hmm. That's awesome. Speaking of winning, how far have you gotten in competitions? Like, what's the highest you've ever ranked? So I've only I've only competed once, oh, right? Because okay. I failed <laughs> and I walked <laughs> away the first time. Mm-hmm. So last year is the first time I competed, and it was a it was a really great day. I placed, I competed in three different classes, and I came in first in each of them. Oh wow! And I took, I took the overall in the novice division. Um, so basically I can only I can only now compete at what's called the open level. Okay. So I'll only compete at one level this year. So and how, then far the, then on the to, how far do you have to go to to become pro? Like what's the what's mm-hmm. that level? Like how do you get to Yeah. How do you get to that? The qualification. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's all tiers. So you can com- you compete first at a regional level, which is like statewide, um, at what's called a national qualifier. If you place first or second at a national qualifier in what's called open, then you qualify to go to a national level show. So at a national level show, you're competing against all the other first or second placers. If you win your class at a national show, that's when you go pro. Oh, okay. Now I got you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's obviously not easy or else everybody would would do that. Yeah. Right. Yo, just to tell you, you're on live, right? Mm Mm-hmm. They can't hear her. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> you know, because they're, she's not plugged in. So they're just hearing you. That's, that's, <laughs> hey, that's not the worst thing that's ever happened. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That's great, though. All right. One, I have one more question about yeah. eating now. Because <laughs> I'm. I, that's that's really my struggle. I, I've always been athletic i've always i've never mm-hmm. really struggled with my weight i've always because i've played ice hockey baseball lacrosse like everything growing up so i was always fairly in shape but mm-hmm. getting older now i was able to eat anything and everything i ever wanted and i would still have a six pack and now right. getting older i don't like it if i work out in the gym four months in a row i'll get my six pack i'll get comfortable with myself i'll stop going to the gym for a month or two and eat whatever and it, at first it's like oh i, I still have a six pack but then before you know it, it's gone. So mm-hmm. now, like, the science behind it, how long did it take you to learn the science? Because, I mean, everybody talks about macros and micros and everything. I don't even know what that is. Yeah. Like, I honestly have no idea. I what, know the word. Yeah. I, know, I know what the I've word actually I've heard the word before, means. but yeah. I, I, that's yeah. because I took uh, economics in school and micro. And, like, <laughs> yeah. but, but I don't know. A little, little different than macro and micro econ. No, I know. That's what I figured. But, like, I, I don't know anything about the science of right. eating. It's really just protein and that's really it like they protein and water yeah cool. it, it took a right. while yeah, i'm still learning mm. there's so much to learn um in a nutshell the concept of macros is that you track the macronutrients which is your proteins your fats and your carbs and the idea is that most people recommend you eat one to one and a half 
times your body weight in protein one one, okay. of grams. Oh, grams. Okay. And so then you, have, you have like one of those scales there, where you weigh out your food and stuff. I do. Yeah. yeah. So that's <laughs> Again, a I'm lot. extreme. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, a, but like what I do is more extreme. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, there is a lot that you can learn in a short amount of time. Um, I can send you over some websites that kind of help you yeah, figure that out. If you like I want, said, like, frame I mean, of mind. the eating part is definitely the hardest for me. Cause I could go to the gym oh, yeah. workout for an hour and, and feel great, but I don't like, I'll eat a salad and I'll feel like accomplished. I'm like, okay, you know what? Like, you did your job. <laughs> Check today. off your health. Exactly. Like I am done. Yeah. Like I, I had my salad today. I had my, my whole wheat English muffin with peanut butter for breakfast. Like, mm-hmm. That was always the issue is my eating because I, I think it's honestly from growing up being able to eat whatever I want. Now getting mm-hmm. older, not being able to do that is it's definitely it's harder because I'm so used to just everything you just described is one of the main factors for why I got into lifting as mm-hmm. a female and tracking nutrition because I was the same way. Mm-hmm. I was a human garbage disposal. Yeah. And then at 18, my metabolism said it's, peace. Yeah. And done. I was in college with the freshman 15, and I'm uh, like, something's got to change. Yeah. My metabolism's finally catching up to me now. Yeah. It's finally it's hard. Now. Yeah. And I mean, I'm, I'm Italian. My family's very Italian. We have <laughs> pasta three to yeah. four times a night. I mean, a week, not a night. That'd be crazy. But <laughs> three to uh, four times like a, week. No. a week. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely hard because. Yeah. I don't want to cook. And if my mom's cooking and me and my girlfriend are like, well, we're not going to cook. She's cooking. And I'm like, well, it's pasta again. And we're like, all right, let's just eat it. We'll, we'll, we'll have a salad tomorrow and we'll cut it out. So mm-hmm. it's always, that's definitely the hardest thing is eating and, and abs are made in the kitchen. That's why it's yeah. like, I feel like I have to work out 10 times harder because I'm eating like crap. And you know, that's where sometimes it just comes down to portion control. Mm-hmm. So There's plenty of people out there that have insane physiques and they just kind of preach moderation. Eat what you want, do what you want, but don't go overboard. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't have that. Again, human garbage disposal. So I have to to weigh out my stuff because I'll just keep eating. Mm -hmm. Um, That's just kind of who who I am as a person. Mm Yeah, no, yeah, it's, I it's gotta hard. get my myself back into the gym. I'm kind of different. It's like my best friend. <laughs> Aren't you happy you stuck now, around now? Now yeah. this is some motivation. No, it is kind of <laughs> now. I mean, especially with my my friend breathing down my neck all the time. Like, get a damn gym membership again. What are you doing? But I mean, I'm different. I kind of I'm not you know crazy into the whole fitness thing. But when I'm on it, I'm like on it because I have a best friend mm-hmm. who's into bodybuilding or whatever. He he mm-hmm. really got me onto it. But when I was eat, you know, my eating thing was I was with the whole portion thing, but I would only eat like. My one big meal would be the dinner and that would be mm-hmm. post workout because I was mm-hmm. normally working out because of my job I would, would be nighttime. Um, mm-hmm. But then during the day, I was just kind of eating like you you said you eat every two and a half hours. I was eating every two hours or making sure I was having something, whether it just be a That's light. That's impressive. Yo- yeah, a light yogurt or yeah. um, uh, like a, a bag, uh, you know, a little ba- uh, snack baggie of almonds. That used to mm-hmm. be my thing. So almonds, that, and then maybe a fiber one bar or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't like so strict, like, you know, competing wise, but that's just how mm-hmm. I was doing my whole fitness thing when I was really on it. And now I'm completely off it. Now it's, you know, three slices of pizza and 12, 12 <laughs> garlic knots, but we're not going to get into that. But yeah, so no, it's definitely, I, I think the moderation does, you know, the word moderation gets thrown around loosely, but it's definitely helps in terms of, you know, you don't, yeah. like you said, don't want to go overboard. You don't want yeah. to ruin what you and started. Moderation can be easier said than done because I know when no, I'm definitely. eating some pizza, man, I'm eating it till the it box is stop. gone. Yeah. <laughs> can, can, can you walk us through a day of your eating, like one like one day of schedule? Like, what do you eat when you wake up? What do you eat dirt throughout yeah. the day? Like, how do you how do you stay full but not overdo it? Because that's yeah. another thing. Like eating one and do you huge have a specific, meal. Yeah. And do you have a specific time when you start consuming food? You know, is it it 8 a.m. this I need to eat my first yogurt or have my eggs of the day, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. So a couple of things to talk about. So when I'm not competing, it's called an off season or improvement season. My top goal is to bring my calories up as absolute high as possible. So I do that by every two weeks. I increase my calories. That way my body has time to adjust. That way I'm not putting on fat, but I'm building my metabolism. So in my off season, I get my calories so freaking high that when I go to lose weight, my calories are up here. I can slowly bring them down. By the time I'm at my lowest, right before a show, I'm still eating a good amount. 
And that makes a huge difference. That's um, the idea is kind of called reverse dieting where you're slowly putting food into your diet. And that makes a huge difference because that's the hardest part about being on a freaking diet is when you're starving, right? Yeah. So I've been there. I've done the, the yo-yo diets where I basically starve myself. I actually eat a good amount of food. I try to eat within 30 minutes of waking up. Um, it kind of depends if I'm doing cardio. My routine is kind of wake up, cardio, shower, drive to work, first meal. And then okay, from there, so you, I just so you do your cardio over. on an empty stomach. Fasted cardio. I do. I've heard that. Fasted right. cardio. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So the idea is that you're tapping into fat storages because you haven't eaten for however long, eight, 10 hours. Um, so you don't have food to use as fuel. So the idea is that your body is going to burn fat. Right. For the energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's breakfast. What do you, now what do so you breakfast. eat for breakfast? Like what, what is an ideal breakfast? breakfast? It kind of, yeah, it kind of depends on where I'm at. So usually it's eggs, egg whites, and some kind of carb, whether it's Ezekiel bread, English muffin, mm -hmm. oatmeal. Um, my second meal is usually chicken, vegetables, rice, avocado. My third meal is usually, I've been doing um, like this tuna. Have you had those, those starfish I'm not a big fish guy. Packs? That's my issue. I feel my like thing is, I used to love my fishing. tuna when I'm on my thing. I would do, yeah, two cans of tuna fish. And instead, I, you know, used to, growing up, my mom would make it with like mayo or mix it light mm -hmm. mayo. But now I started doing a lemon juice is what I just yeah. started mixing it with. And then I would just eat it like that. A little hot sauce, light hot sauce if I felt. Yeah, like so spicy. I do a buffalo, a buffalo one. They're, they're literally like packs, like little sealed packs. So they're not even cans anymore that I buy. And they already have all the hot sauce in it. So they taste oh, wow. really good. There you go. I got to try and get into it. It doesn't taste fishy. So you might, oh, yeah. I mean, you might want to try it. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, buffalo. That's, yeah, I, I that. love buffalo anything. Pizza mostly, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a good kick though. So it's not like fishy. Mm -hmm. So that's lunch. And then, and as far as yeah, dinner. So I'll do tuna with like veggies and maybe like some kind of healthy fat. So like cashews mm -hmm. um, is what I'm doing right now. And then after that, I hit my pre-workout meal. It's usually chicken, vegetables, and a good amount of carbs. Right now I've been doing red potatoes, but I'll either do like red potatoes, sweet potatoes, those pizza bagels, how, how, rice cakes. When, are you, when, when is that pre-workout meal before, like how long is that before you're working out? So everybody has a different opinion right? and you know what opinions are like. No, of course. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm sure some people would even say, why would you even eat like, well, I mean, even me, sometimes right. I would, I would have a protein shake and then go to the gym on the protein shake, but cause, but you know, but it's, everybody's different. Everybody's different. Right. Exactly. So when I go to, when I go to work out, I go to lift and my goal is to lift as heavy as I can. And in order to lift as heavy as I can, energy. I have to have carbs because carbs are what your body uses for fuel. So I eat a lot of carbs before I work out to get in a good lift. Um, I personally like to work out usually 45 minutes to an hour after I eat. I hear some people say, you know, don't eat less than more than two hours or wait at least two hours before you. Then you're hungry again. <laughs> Everyone has a different opinion. Yeah. That's just what works for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you eat after you work out as well? Yeah. So after I work out, it's all about getting in a fast, um, trying to keep this not too scientific. <laughs> it's all about <laughs> getting in like a simple it. carb, which is why your friend eats pop tarts when they, after they right. work out, it's all about getting in a simple carb that your body can break down really fast. Right. So like Jasmine rice, white rice, um, oatmeal is what I do. I'm doing right now. That that's more of a complex carb. Um, but I'll do a carb and a protein post-workout. Okay. And then I usually eat one more meal before bed. Wow. Yeah, so that is, that's a lot of food. Is that meal before bed a light thing, like a like a, some sort of, you know, cashews or something like that? All, or is it a yeah, heavier all, thing? So all my meals are, are similar. Um, they All my meals have about 25 to 35 grams of protein. And then they can just kind of fluctuate with how many carbs or fats I have. Right now I'm doing like 32 grams of peanut butter. And three ounces of chicken before bed. Mm -hmm. And you ever feel like right when you're done eating your, because you you weigh it out or or you make the portion or whatever. You ever feel like, mm -hmm. wow, that wasn't enough, and then go for more, or you you're disciplined enough to say, hey, you know, I ate what I ate. I gotta wait until my next meal. So I weigh it out because if I didn't, I would say, oh, keep eating. I want more. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I always want more. Exactly, that's I mean, what I'm that's saying. Just it's part hard. Of it. mm -hmm. So for me. 
I like having the plan and I like knowing, nope, you're eating this and this is how much. And then it's just kind of like a, a non-negotiable for myself at that point. Like I ate it, it's done. Mm-hmm. So you got to stay, di- it's going back to discipline. Dis- going back to discipline. Yeah. Yeah. So that's huge. So I like how you said but yeah, discipline I mean, the, the more weeks than leading up to prep, the last like six weeks, I mean, my, I haven't really gotten hungry bad mm-hmm. yet, mm-hmm. but it'll come. And you, when you're, you're, couple, you don't do when you're a couple now? weeks out, you are fucking hangry. Yeah, exactly. And you don't, yeah. and you don't do cheat meals until after. Like, you, is there right. a certain time when you stop? Like, hey, I'm, I'm eight weeks out. I no more cheat meals, or is it when you're feeling every it? Every competitor is and... different. Mm-hmm. Every competitor, every person has a different body type. Mm-hmm. Um, my body, unfortunately, doesn't process cheat meals that well. Some people can have a cheat meal and they look great right afterwards. Some people can have a cheat meal and their metabolism bounces right back. I know people who have cheat meals once a week until maybe four weeks out. Wow. I personally only really do cheat meals in my off season. Oh, really? So once you get to prepping, you're no more cheat meals. I usually prep about 16 to 20. This is my, so this is my third prep. And they've always either been between 16 and 20 weeks out. And I might do a couple cheat meals at the beginning, but not really about halfway and on. Not really. Really? Yeah, that's awesome. That's I, I cheat meal a little bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I can't talk. Like I said, I'm not in the gym right now, so I don't really, I don't have anything going on with the with the meals. I'm, I eat what I want. Yeah, no, I'm. Right. I do. I do. I, hey, I do like my four. I try to do my forty push-ups a day at least. You, know? <laughs> hey, you got to get something in. You got to start somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because right. I mean, my girl, like like I just said, my my girlfriend and I were trying to get into the gym. Like, it's not hard for me to get into the gym. It's hard for mm-hmm. me to get into a uh, a routine of eating healthy and being in the gym. Because yeah. when I'm in yeah, the gym, I can I could work out for hours and and feel great. But at night, I I want that ice cream. I want something mm-hmm. more. So and and when I'm working but out, I'm even hungry. That's where healthier options and portion control come in. Mm-hmm. I would I actually would sooner advise against someone doing what I do than yeah. telling them they should, <laughs> because again, it's so it's so extreme. And mm-hmm. I also tell people if it wasn't for the fact that my husband does it with me, like it's our thing, yeah, it's it wouldn't really be worth it because it then is watching a very somebody else doing life. it, it's like oh my god. He's eating right, it's a very, it's a very eating... different lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, try that freaking Halo Top, man. Yeah, it's no, so I'm gonna. Good. I, now I honestly feel like I should throw out the fish food, Ben and Jerry's, <laughs> but that this will be the last one. I'll start Monday. <laughs> Monday, I'm, 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 I'm a Monday starter. Typical. I can't, exactly, I can't do anything unless it's Monday, and then I'm then I'm good to go. Yeah, but really, you guys, just like occasionally looking at a nutritional label, occasionally trying to make a healthier swap, or mm do some portion control, little things like that make a big difference. Yeah, definitely. You don't have to weigh your stuff out like me. I'm (laughs) on the, I'm on the crazy end. (laughs) No, that's, it's hard. I'm, I'm it's definitely hard to get into it, but, um, doing it step by step is definitely the way to do it. I think going into it Mm -hmm. right away, it's not, it's not ideal to do that, to go from one extreme to the other, because then it'll never last. Mm -hmm. So if if you're You're going to have better success making a small change. Yeah, So like if you're a big soda drinker. Take out soda. Take out soda. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to see results just from that one change. Mm -hmm. Um, If you're, you know, if you like to just kind of eat out all the time, great. Maybe just have half of your dinner and save the other half for lunch the next day. Mm -hmm. Just little small changes can make a big difference. Definitely. No, I agree. I definitely agree. And it, it was great talking to you. I mean, this is, like I said, I've been following you for about eight months now. I've seen where you've <laughs> gone and, and the things that you've gone through. And, and I've taken it into consideration for my vlog channel that I've created over the last eight months. And, I mean, it's been cool. It's been really cool. Yeah, yeah it was. Uh, well, I'm Andrew, by the way. I kind of switched spots <laughs> with him. I was over on the side. So now you kind of see me. But, no, this was definitely cool once I heard the body, you know, the fitness stuff. I'm always interested in that stuff because my friend – He's doing, yeah. he's, you know, he's the, uh, we're the yin and yang kind of, I'm, you know, yeah. the lazy boy and he's, you know, good in the gym. He, he gets it in, mm-hmm. but, but he also... teaches you about the pop tarts. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And he's actually the one that I definitely try to, uh, past couple of days I haven't, but I'm when people at my work at my job work in a restaurant. So God knows it's mm-hmm. hard. It's like an Italian type yeah. of restaurant too. So I'm eating, oh. you know, it's like snacking, meat, meatballs and yeah, always mm-hmm. snacking. Yep. But, uh, I, because... you gotta make sure the food's up to specs. 
Yeah. <laughs> God, exactly. exactly. Yeah, tested before yeah, the other tested. <laughs> exactly. But um, he he was always about uh, drinking, you know, because when he was prepping, drinking gallon, like two or three gallons. But I, from that, um, I'd try to drink about a gallon of water a day. Like I'll mm-hmm. drink my gallon, and then whatever else comes is good. And that I think that's kind of helping me not over, you know, get too fat from eating all the other <laughs> crap during the day. But water's a big key for me. You know. Water is huge because if you are like eating a ton of carbs or eating processed food, sodium, whatever, your body hate our bodies hate us pretty yeah. much, mm-hmm. and it holds on to it. So what water does is it just flushes everything out. Yeah. So if you're one of those people who like gets bloated from a big meal, or you get bloated after you kind of drink a ton, uh, if you like go out for the weekend, just drinking water it just flushes out your system, so you'll yeah. feel better afterwards too. Yeah, that's definitely what I've even like, – because, no, like I said, I mean, no, all jokes aside, like I definitely don't eat healthy right now and things like that. But wh- when I do drink my water throughout the day, I can tell that like at night if I leave my restaurant and, and I didn't eat food there or something and I do honestly go to the pizzeria. There's no joking and stuff. I'll get maybe two two slices and honestly a dozen garlic knots. But eat. <laughs> all right, okay, I know, I know. I said it very nonchalant, but – you know, I'll get a dozen huh? garlic knots and a couple specialty slices, whatever. But, you know, and, and like I said, in between, I'll do a couple push-ups. And stuff, but in the next morning, I don't wake up f- looking or feeling like I've gained mm-hmm. weight or any. I actually, sometimes, I even right now, I can tell myself that, like, you know, from the work that I put in the past being in the gym, that some of it mm-hmm. stayed. And it's I mean, I've been able to maintain because of my water intake. I've been able to balance yeah. balance it to a point. Yeah, water makes it, water and sleep make a bigger difference than a lot of people realize. Mm-hmm. Stress management. Mm-hmm. makes a big difference like yeah. i have been on some hippie shit the past couple of years like preaching just like namaste through my day <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like don't be like stress packs on weight mm-hmm. uh, yeah i, Again, agree. I don't want to get too nerdy into like the science behind it but if you can manage your stress if you can just kind of stay like just staying positive and happy and like carefree mm-hmm. your body will react it's crazy mm-hmm. yeah no i, I hear you well, how about this one? Uh, what's one last final thought I guess you would give to anybody out here listening, you know, who might be yep. starting a fitness journey or somebody who um, is is on one and contemplating stopping, you know, mm-hmm. or, you know, or what, you know, anything that you want to, you know, give out to people. Yeah, I think my biggest my biggest advice that I tell people is. It doesn't really matter what you do. It has to be sustainable for you. Again, what I do is extreme. I've found a way to make it sustainable for me, but I don't expect it out of most people. Like you said, for you, it makes sense to try to just make sure you get your water in. Making little small changes, you know, whether it's you and your girlfriend cooking dinner one night and having, you know, grilled chicken and grilled asparagus and, you know, red potatoes in the oven or whatever it is, whatever it is that it makes sense to put into your life. Make it something that is sustainable because if it's some kind of yo-yo crazy twin trend of I'm not going to have sweets for 30 days, like, it doesn't okay, last. what's going to happen on day 10? You're going to go get five tubs of Ben and Jerry's mm-hmm. compared to maybe <laughs> yeah. like the quarter of a pint you would have had. Mm-hmm. Been so, there. <laughs> I'm back, by the way. I, you know, <laughs> I just, I have a day job, you know, sadly, and uh, I had to get on a shitty call. But um, I, mean, yeah. I feel you. <laughs> yeah, so I missed that. But I, I'm gonna re-listen to this. <laughs> See no, what it's I been missed. great. I, I really. <laughs> you guys hosted today, y'all. Right? <laughs> heavy, heavy we took over talk. the weekly heavy food talk. Exactly, it's all about food. The last quarter is all about food. Well, that, everyone yeah. loves it. Exactly. But it's yeah. actually it's very important, though. Mm-hmm. It is important. No, food is the biggest thing. Said. It's easy to get into the gym, but once yeah. you're out of the gym and then trying to sustain a healthy mm-hmm. living, it's. That's where I feel like almost everybody has the issue. Yeah. Yeah. It's the hardest part. Yeah. It is. But, but like is you so said good. earlier, it does get easier. It's all about kind of making those good habits. Mm-hmm. And you use seasoning, dude. Like, yeah. you know, like you make some yeah. chicken fajitas, you yeah. know? Yeah. You yeah. yeah. Something like that. Some cayenne pepper. Where, where, yeah. where, could, the, uh, where could the people find you? Yeah. You plug all your stuff. Instagram, everything. You want me to like message you it? No, 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 no. no, no. no. Like just plug, 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 you know, just say I'm, um, you know, find me on Instagram at. Yeah, yeah. So my Instagram handle is Sasha Christine Fit. Okay, okay. That's your biggest platform. Is that the only platform you use, or do you? That's do you... really the only platform I use. Okay. Instagram's cool because you're able to kind of connect and find the posts that matter to you with hashtags yeah. and yeah. community groups. So 
I'm it's from, really yeah, the, I, I do the music thing. So I, that's why I was telling him, mm-hmm. I was did a podcast with him just before we, you know, you hopped on. So I was the one right before you, but we was talking about like Instagram, I think is just easy forever because it's also easy. You can, you can pop in and out of it. Mm-hmm. And that's why and I think it's everything. so good. Now it's Twitter and like Instagram is Twitter, Snapchat no, and exactly. everything. Like I it's... think so. Yeah. So I, that's why, like I said, you can pop in and out of it and mm-hmm. that's, it's the best for any field. It's, it's also cool because it's got a little bit of everything. Yeah. Some people, they don't give a crap about reading. So you don't want to read my captions. You don't want to read my tips. That's cool. But you want to see a photo if it's inspirational or you want to see a video kind of showing you how to do a workout. There's value in that. Or on the flip side, if you are someone who wants to read or kind of have that conversation, that's where comments come in or, exactly. you know, yeah. polls on their stories. So it, there's, a, there's a lot of ways to interact, a lot, of, a lot of ways to kind of get value in and out of it. For sure, for sure. Yeah. All right, you, yeah, I think you awesome. guys got a. You guys wrap. Yeah, no, keep it going. Is, hey, this has been. I, I think I got a good amount of information, and I'm glad that you came on. I know I, it was pretty much last minute, and we we got blown off by the blizzard yesterday. But um, <laughs> it's been awesome. I, I had a, a lot of fun. Enjoyed talking. This is actually my first time on his podcast. I know. I well. I never even had you on yeah, to so, talk about so what you do. I know. So I, well, I just wanted to get warmed up because I was like, hey, you know, what? she is way more interesting than I am. So I figured, you know what? Let's let's. Let's ease you should have just had an extra it. shot of espresso. I, I, mean, I had two already. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I can sit still over here. <laughs> yeah. No, but like once again, it was great talking to you. Um, I enjoyed yeah. it a lot. It was cool actually conversating rather than just asking you questions yeah. over DM. So uh, I definitely Very had a good cool. time. And uh, thanks, Rizzo, for in- yeah. inviting us on here. Well, thank you for it was nice meeting you, Andrew. This yeah, is the first it was good time to meet you. you. Good to meet you. Thank so, you guys for it's... doing my podcast for me. Right, exactly. And I, <laughs> I got to leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So uh, I hope to have you on again with Rizzo oh, and myself. Yeah, I'll be on next time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He'll be on the whole time. Whole yeah. Time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure your abs are hurting no, yeah, now. Yeah. It, it was awesome to meet you guys. And if you're ever down in Nashville, if you're ever down this way, let me know. Pizza, so burgers, around. and pop tarts. Yep. On no, you. No, yeah. Tennessee, that's, that's chicken. Yeah, we'll take a stroll down the Pop Tart um, aisle. I'll rock your world. Do you? you do go. you like? Do you like the Predators? Are you a hockey fan? Man, you have you. If you live in Nashville, you have to for the Preds. Right. I, uh, there was a rough year last year. You know, they did so well. I, I was actually uh, gunning for them, but you know what? There's we've had a couple. Year. We've had a couple pretty good years. Yeah. I was sad yeah. to see James Neal go. That was tough. That was tough. My my coworker, his cousin's actually on the Preds team, and he's like trying to find a way to like really? get stuff out of it. <laughs> oh, really? That's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. All, All right, awesome. awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, All uh, right, thanks we'll you guys. Have you a later. good one. God bless. All right, take care. See ya. <laughs> you guys are naturals, yo. That was you. Good. You get it. Was the end good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we're yeah, still on. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you're still on Twitch right now. She's kind of hung up on her, right? What? She's gone, right? Oh, yeah, she's oh, gone. Yeah. So I don't know how <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, like. Yeah. No, that was dope. No, yeah, this is what they see right now. Wow, I can't believe first time I'm on this podcast and I hosted. <laughs> there. All right, I am out of here. Oh, that was buzzy. <laughs> Until next time, guys. Hey, it's Bogota Let's Scraps go. here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're plugging? Nick yeah. J's plug. Yeah, yeah. I'll put all your links. Uh, and we got Diddy in the building down oh, here. Dude, yeah, oh, my God. I feel like another world when you got these headphones.